Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. The Kingdom of God, that's our theme, and we're exploring what it really means. So how can we learn about the Kingdom of God from the teaching of Jesus? Well, I said yesterday that everything he taught was really about the kingdom. Uh, This was his subject, no matter what he was teaching or preaching about, in one way or another, what it means to live the life of the kingdom here on earth. I'm going to take one of his parables as a starting point, Um, the parable of the sower. Uh, The sower goes forth to sow the seed. Now, the seed is the word of God in Scripture. But, of course, it is the word in the New Testament. It is the word about the kingdom of God. We saw that when Jesus began his his teaching ministry, he made this proclamation, the time has come, the kingdom of God is at hand, is now within your reach, Repent and believe the good news. Believe what I teach about the kingdom, and you will receive the gift of the kingdom within you. Now, this seed, this teaching, this word about the kingdom of God falls on different types of soil. And the soil represents the different kinds of people or hearts that the people had. Now, first of all, some of the seed falls upon the path. And Jesus says the birds of the air come and eat the seed that is on the path. And uh, he later explained to the disciples what the parable meant. I'm going to talk about the parable and its meaning all at the same time. Now, the path really represents those people with hardened hearts. They're hardened against the truth. Now, interestingly, Jesus likens the birds to the devil who comes and steals, eats, steals that word away from those with the hard hearts. But the interesting thing is this, that Jesus says, that he takes away what was sown in the heart. Now that means that every time Jesus preached, even to the Pharisees, even to the teachers of the law, who certainly had hard hearts, Jesus spoke to their hearts. He didn't speak just to their intellect. And that was part of the problem. They just wanted a sort of rational, intellectual approach to spiritual things. But Jesus spoke to the heart. But because of the hardness of their hearts against the truth, they did not receive that word. So it was snatched away from them. In other words, the ability for them to become part of God's kingdom was taken away by the devil because they rejected the message. So they had the opportunity. And you remember Jesus warned them, prostitutes, tax gatherers, the swindlers, the crooks, are getting into the kingdom of God ahead of you Pharisees, you religious leaders. Why? They were sinners. They weren't self-righteous like those religious leaders. They were sinners, but they were sinners who were turning to God with repentance and faith. They were asking for the forgiveness of their sins. They were giving their lives to become believers in Jesus Christ. And so they were becoming part of the kingdom. But those with hardened hearts against the truth, those who thought they knew and understood everything, were actually having the opportunity of becoming part of God's eternal heavenly kingdom snatched away from them. And so Jesus actually said those Pharisees, those teachers of the law, were cursed. They were under a curse because of their rejection of the truth. And that, of course, is a fulfillment of 
of what is written in the Old Testament, that God puts before us the opportunity of blessing or curse, life or death. And he says, choose blessing, choose life, that you may live. Don't choose the road of death. Don't choose the way of curse. Don't reject the truth. Embrace the truth. So uh, Jesus was giving the opportunity to all who came under the sound of his voice to receive the gift of the kingdom. That must be made very clear. He wanted all who heard him to receive this gift of the kingdom. The religious leaders and those who were influenced by them rejected the truth and so were rejecting their ability to receive the gift of the kingdom. Then Jesus says that um, some of the seed fell upon rocky soil where it was received at first with joy. So these are people that hear, oh yes, I want to receive the gift of the kingdom. And they make some kind of response so that they can receive the gift of the kingdom. But it's a shallow response. It's not really a heartfelt response. It doesn't lead to the transformation of life that receiving the gift of the kingdom actually does create in a person's experience. It's an emotional thing. It's an emotional thing. It's a temporary thing. It's a superficial thing. It's often a conditional thing. So Jesus says that when the problems arise, when the, the going gets tough, he likens that to the scorching sun. Because there's no depth of root in these uh, seeds that fall upon the rocky soil, they quickly wither and die. And I suppose a lot of us would know people that have made some kind of response to the gospel but after a few weeks, you don't see them in the church. You don't see any transformation or change in their life. You don't see any real presence or power or life or evidence of Christ in them or of the kingdom of God being a reality in their lives at all. And that's because, of course, they haven't really truly been born again. Just making some kind of superficial or conditional or temporary response to God is not the evidence of new birth. So sadly, you know, some are going to hear and because of the hardness of their hearts, they are going to have the revelation of the kingdom snatched away. Some, because of the shallowness of their hearts, uh, are not going to survive the times of testing. Then Jesus says that some of the seed falls uh, upon soil where there are thorns, thistles. Uh, in other words, the, the soil receives the kingdom, but there are other things growing in that person's life. Now, this we, we, we've talked about the hardened heart. Uh, we, we've talked about the hardened heart, the shallow heart. This is the divided heart. That uh, on the one hand, the person says, "Yes, I want to be part of God's kingdom. Yes, I want Jesus in my life," but at the same time. They are giving way to the things of the flesh. They are allowing the things of self to grow up in their lives. And Jesus says those are like the thorns, the thistles that choke the life of the kingdom. Now, he describes those things as being the cares of this life. In other words, worry, anxiety, fear. Why? Because there isn't the real trust in God that is the evidence of someone who belongs to the kingdom. There isn't that dependence upon the Holy Spirit. There isn't that dependence upon Jesus that is the real evidence of faith in Jesus. So, you know, a person may go to church and, and there may be a sort of spiritual side to their life, but they're double-minded they're, they've got divided hearts. And of course, James tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and cannot expect to receive anything from God. Presumably, that would also include the kingdom, which is God's greatest gift to us. But then, praise God, there is the good soil. And the good soil receives the word. And of course, that which starts as a seed grows and becomes a harvest field. And 
in those lives, uh, Jesus says there is fruit a hundred times, sixty times, thirty times, that which was sown. Different people have different capacities. We'll see that in other ways in which Jesus taught about the kingdom. But at least this is good soil. These are good hearts. These are people that have opened their lives, yielded themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, have received him, have received his life, have received his kingdom, have received his spirit, and they are intent on bearing the fruit of the spirit. The evidence of the kingdom is to be seen in their lives. They are therefore reproducing seeds of the kingdom all around them. They are sowing seeds of the kingdom into the lives of others about them. Now, they may do this consciously, they may do it unconsciously, but they are doing it because the presence, the life, the vitality, the reality of the kingdom within them has a determining effect upon other people around them. So that's very, very exciting. But we have to understand, yes, there are those that are like the path, those that are like the rocky soil, those that are like the thorny soil. How important, therefore, that we should endeavor to make sure that our lives are good soil, that we have received the seed, that it is growing and developing within us. The kingdom of God is being manifested in our lives, and we're sowing seeds of the kingdom all around us. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 